This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video for Thursday, the 23rd of February. James Spann here. Uh, one reminder, our weather tour continues next week. Now, this week's show that was scheduled for Pleasant Valley tonight is being moved to Mar Monday, March 5th. But next week, the show will go on Tuesday. That's Tuesday night at the Coleman Civic Center. And we started at 630 and we hope to see you there. Check out some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network this morning. Hey, a little fog. It's a little, that's a lot of fog up at Hamilton in northwest Alabama. That's coming from Hamilton High School. And you talk about some dense fog. How about the Gulf Coast? You can't see anything down there. That's our Gulf Shore Skycam. But the fog is not bad everywhere because things look pretty good in Trustville. That's a Skycam on Chalkville Mountain Road. Looks like two brave souls out there at the insane hour of 5 a.m., Okay, water vapor satellite view. You know, the upper low that's over Baja just has not moved. It will not be involved in this thing. So that will lessen the amplitude of the trough coming in here tonight. And uh, meaning the severe weather threat not as high as it could be. Temperatures around the nation, uh, just not too bad. In fact, uh, we are looking at a high of 76 here today. If we hit that, that's within six degrees of the record. The record high today, 82, set way back in 1918. All right, we'll check the uh, watch warning map around the nation this morning, and you can see that we've got uh, some winter storm issues up north with this thing. Uh, winter storm watches and warnings for parts of the plains in the Midwest. Winter storm watch for parts of uh, the Great Lakes region, including Chicago and Detroit. And of course, this is what we're watching, the convective outlook. This is today's risk, and really tonight it runs from near Montgomery north to Cincinnati, and that includes about the northern two-thirds of Alabama. The probabilities remain at 15%, and we'll take a closer look at that as we go along. Uh, tomorrow, the risk moves well to the east over the South Atlantic coast, and the rain for the next five days, valid through Monday evening of next week, suggesting about one inch from Birmingham south. And lighter amounts up over the northwestern part of the state. We'll check the modeling. This is the 06 EGFS, valid at 12 noon today. And you can see the uh, northern branch energy approaching down below that. I think the day will be dry. We should be capped off most of the day. There's a pretty deep surface low under 1,000 millibars over southern Missouri. We'll look at the RPM. This is at 3 o'clock. And I guess there could be a blip on radar somewhere today, but... I'd say during the daylight hours, the chance of anybody getting wet pretty small, balmy, breezy, mid-70s. All right, this is tonight at midnight, and really the RPM has been very consistent in advertising just kind of a narrow line of storms, mainly from Birmingham north with nothing over South Alabama. And the deal is, with that capping inversion, it we kind of have to wait on the upper forcing to arrive before the storms develop, and then they form in a line. And if that's the case, the main threat tonight would be from hail and strong straight line winds and not really from a tornado. But if any storms do develop out ahead of that in a discrete fashion, they could produce maybe an isolated tornado. And then tomorrow at noon, it's long gone. I mean, uh, the day should be partly sunny, breezy, and cooler We'll check the instability. This is at 6 o'clock this evening and just moderate values. Now, earlier this week, we saw higher numbers. In fact, really, the highest instability on this chart is uh, really up around the Ohio River, over 1,000 joules, and that's because of the cold air aloft down here. The numbers are really between 250 and a little over 500. So that's just moderate, and that's good. Of course, the shear is very high. This is the 0 to 3 kilometer storm relative helicity, veering of the wind with height in relation to storm motion, and uh, that those values are maxed out. So if anything can get going, we could see some up uh, rotating updrafts, and again, that's the reason you can't rule out the chance of an isolated tornado tonight. Energy helicity index numbers are now peaking over Kentucky, and that, of course, is where... Uh, you know, the, the coldest air aloft, better instability and shear combination will be. And the STP, the significant tornado parameter, this is valid tonight at 9 o'clock. And the numbers are just over 1 uh, down here, north central Alabama. And that's significant. You know, I mean, anything over 1, that means there's potential for maybe a tornado, but certainly nothing like the numbers we saw earlier this week, thankfully. So I'd say the main window for severe weather, 6 o'clock this evening, until maybe 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. 
Main threat, hail and strong straight line winds. We cannot rule out the chance of an isolated tornado, and we'll be watching. Tomorrow, the trough deepens over the eastern part of the country. Showers and storms are exiting the state. The GFS is much slower than the uh, RPM. We'll say becoming partly sunny, breezy, and cooler. Highs tomorrow, maybe upper 50s to near 60. And on Saturday, as we start the weekend, beautiful day. Be kind of cold early with low and mid 30s. The NAM has us down to 32. Highs on Saturday, mid to upper 50s. And Sunday, you know, the moisture comes back on this run. We, the models are just waffling here. Uh, but I do think we'd better mention just maybe the chance of a shower late Sunday. But I think most of the day will be dry. Highs, upper 50s to near 60. We'll check the European on Sunday. Pretty identical. This is noon Sunday. And it's got a chance of rain mainly south of Montgomery at midday. So we'll kind of watch the radar trends. And I think we'll mention a small chance of a shower Sunday afternoon. Next week, Monday, uh, maybe some risk of showers. And we warm up into the middle 60s. Tuesday, pretty much the same deal. Not a lot of forcing, but showers are possible with mid to upper 60s. And then Wednesday, Looks pretty wet on this run, and there's been some good consistency here. And the thickness values are suggesting highs around 70, pretty mild. So the first half of next week looking a little showery and unsettled. And then a week from today on Thursday, energy passes north of here, and uh, showers maybe linger, but they should be ending at that point. We'll check the end of the forecast on March 9th. This is all voodoo, and people say, why do you show it? Well, because we can. We're just interested, looking for trends. No cold air. The, the northern branch has the cold air cut off. Very deep trough to the west. That looks active and stormy if by chance that's right. And there's the NAO. Haven't showed this in a while. And again, it stays positive in most of the ensemble members through mid-March. Waiting for a change, but so far no evidence of that. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so, uh, so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on TV this evening. ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.